most difficult attempts Sabira had made. So, do it for one is about Stephanie, who has terminal multiple cirrhosis and cannot reconcile to the fact that she once had the world at her feet as the most famous violinist and is now left without a shred of dignity. The violin, which was her first love, and her husband, the great conductor, are both out of the picture. The story in the play unfolds over six sessions with her psychiatrist, Dr. Feldman. She comes through a range of emotions, and her relationship with Dr. Feldman develops. This extract that we will see will be enacted in session four, where she is confined to a wheelchair, as always. The scene is both dynamic and aggressive. The original performance was by Vijay Krishna and Sabira Merchant, and tonight it'll be Sabira Merchant and Alec Padamsi. Yeah, I have here no fire. Hey, diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. The silly doctor laughed to see such sport, because he's simply an ignorant loon. <laughs> And I'm going to apologize for missing my last two appointments, if that's what you're waiting for, so tough shit, mate. And David didn't ask me to come, and if he had, I still wouldn't. Claire. And while we're still on the subject, would you mind not, not pursuing me to the privacy of my home like some crazed hound after the smell of a fox or something? <laughs> I mean, I know you need your money and all that, but would you kindly let me decide whether I need your services in the future and not fill me up at all days of the hour and night when I'm in the middle of doing things? Thank you. I phoned it twice simply to see if you are in need of a talk. It is my normal practice when a patient misses her appointment. Apologize if I called you annoyance or embarrassment. Embarrassment? <laughs> Why should you cause me any embarrassment? It's just that I don't like the idea of any Tom, Dick, or Harry. <laughs> Trying to break into the privacy of my life at the drop of a volume of Freud or wherever your little god is. So you can cut that right out, Mr. C. Did I interrupt a lesson you were giving? Mind your own fucking business. You know what your problem is, Dr. Phil? I mean, we've spent a lot of time and money and money, <laughs> trying to find out what's supposed to be wrong with me. A fair is fair. Can we have a look at one or two of your little problems? Huh? Uh, first, you suffer from telephone me. <coughs> then you have this annoying habit of staring at your feet when you should have the good manners of addressing the person sitting opposite to you. And then you keep sucking these fucking lozenges when you don't even have a cold. <laughs> and last, but certainly not the least, this phony German accent you put on. <laughs> like you're some mid-European guru or something. Which to me, which to me, doctor, is a definite sign of schizophrenia. <laughs> Or at best, a delusion of grandeur. Now, if you care to come to my house and pay me 50 pounds a session, <laughs> I'd be glad to try and rid you of these maddening habits and make you as normal as the rest of us. <laughs> so, what do you say? Hmm? It is certainly true that many of my patients go through sometimes and they find me extremely irritating. That is certainly the case, is it? You're damn right, it's the case. And you're the case, mate. You're the case. <laughs> well, since you're clearly refusing to speak, which is always a sign of blocked thoughts or feelings, as you said, <clears throat> I suppose I shall have to help you out by saying something. You'll be glad to hear 
that I'm not taking my pills anymore. Or very irregularly at that, so how does that grab you, Dr. Frankenstein? <laughs> Will the monster turn into a vampire or something? Hmm? Ooh, a little worried. Are we? Uh, tell me, how are you managing without them? Hmm? Oh, very well, frankly well, better than before. I mean, I think they were the cause of half my trouble, really. Hmm. I'm thinking of going to some other doctor who'd know better what pills to prescribe for my condition. I think this case is a wee bit beyond your competence, wouldn't you say? <laughs> I mean, if you were honest with yourself for once. It is a matter of opinion at this stage, I think. We can only judge by the final results of the treatment. Oh, so that's what we are, the course of treatments, I see. And how are the treatments going, in your deeply considered opinion? Successful, would you say? <coughs> Satisfactory, huh? I would really like to recommend that you resume the tablets on a regular basis. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> the profound, long question of suicide. <laughs> suicide, yes. I've been seriously considering it again, Doctor. And I wanted your personal opinion as to the best, most foolproof, and least painful method. I mean, I couldn't bear to do it and then wake up and have you staring at me with that sickly, sympathetic expression on your face, although it might kill me from a shock, I suppose. <laughs> and then that would be all right, so... What do you feel? What are your what are your feelings on the this question, Doctor Feldman? What what are your feelings? I think suicide is a waste of life, and I have dedicated my entire life to the preservation and improvement of life. So I am utterly opposed to it, completely and utterly against it. Hmm. How have your plans been progressing? I mean, the lessons are helping your uh, husband and so on. They haven't. I said they haven't been progressing. And, uh, you're helping your husband with the work and so on. And he's got a secretary. I, only I said he's got a secretary! Tart! Bows and scrapes as if the sun shone out of his ass. Uh, 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 have you any other ideas in the future? Why don't you just leave me alone? Leave me alone! If it's the same, what would you have me do for me, darling? What would you have me do for you? Oh, piss off. Piss off. Piss off the pair of you and leave me in peace. You know, I read a book by a doctor one time hmm? who describes the phenomenon of an ambitious business 